Hello. Hi. We're here. It, we're back. It's, it's Friday, October again. 30th, 2020. For those of you that don't own a calendar or a watch or a phone or have access to the internet. How are you listening to this? Like, what's going on? I don't, I don't pretend I, uh, to know these things, but if you don't know, or if you're in the future, welcome back to the past. That is October the 30th. The podcast today. 2020. Yeah. Uh, right off the bat, I it's guess gonna we'll, be Halloween. we'll start with just a quick little tidbit. We have officially moved from Libsyn over to Acast. We have switched platforms. What does that mean for you? Really nothing. Nothing at all, but it's just news for us. Yeah, so we are operating on a new system, and we're also putting our episodes up on YouTube. Uh, the most recent four are up there, and once this one's done, it should be automatically published, and if it's not, I'll just put it on there. But uh, this one will be on there, too, so you can... There you go. It'll just... It's it's very meta in that way. Subscribe to us on YouTube. That would be sweet. I want to get one of those giant gold buttons. That'd be so cool. We have a gold button. That would be... That'd be yeah. tight. They oh, got yeah. the, the A weird starting symbol. cult gold button. But with all that being said, uh, it is the day before Halloween, so we figured we might as well just. We did the Halloween hodgepodge hour, you know. It's kind of. I like remember this, that episode. But this one's a little bit more condensed into creepiness and creepiness yeah. alone. Um, it's like an extract of the spooky. Yeah. So I want to start this this uh, wicked weird episode off. Uh, Put yourself in a mindset right now, in a very peaceful mindset. I would never do that. Just, just, just relax. Just listen to my voice for a second. Okay. The ocean, the wind, sleep, happy time. All right, are you there? <laughs> All right, are you there? Yeah. You should be there at this point. Um, now that you're peaceful. I'm here. You you know when you're peaceful you don't really think about how creepy things can be, <laughs> and I want to just take you out of this world right now. We what? Why talk, would you put us there? <laughs> we want to talk. I want to bring up the idea of ghost ships, okay? And these are interesting to me because they're they're not what you think they are. You know, when you say a ghost ship, it's not a ship that itself is a ghost or has ghosts on it necessarily. It really is just an abandoned ship that is in the ocean. What about space? I guess, yeah. And th- yeah, you could have ghost ships, ghost rockets. Fantastic. Like, well, yeah, I guess spaceship, you know, that's yeah, fine. that's what I was thinking. Um, But yeah, there's something, I don't know, tell me this is not just me, but there's something inherently creepy about being by the ocean and seeing a boat and it's just like, oh, hell yeah, dude, it's a boat. This is cool. That boat just washes up, and you go on there, and either no one's on it or everyone that is on it is dead. How often do you think people are in this situation? Hell yeah, that's creepy. That's... That... <laughs> it's like, I may be alone in this. Mm-hmm. No, dude, that's fucking terrifying. It's it's not necessarily jump at you like, oh, spooky, spooky, blah, 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 it's blah, blah. It's just blah. like, it's daunting. It is. It's, it's like, a lot the hell to happened? take in. And that isn't to take away uh, the other ships. The Mary Celeste is supposedly extremely haunted. Never personally done a ton of research on it because, I don't know, I guess I've never really been interested in haunted boats. Do you know where it hails from? The Mary Celeste? Yeah. Uh, it's, I have no idea. I really don't. I would imagine. I know no history of the Mary Celeste. South American, maybe. I don't know. I uh, maybe Spain. I'm not sure. They, I'm gonna. That's why I made. But you're here. Can you find that information for us? Get your Can phone. You, we need to find out where the Mary Celeste originates from. Part of Thank me you. wants to say America, but that can't like be South true. South America is what I was thinking, but that was just because of Celeste. I always like associate with like the Spanish. So maybe Spain. That's maybe fair. who I, knows? I'm, man, I'm now I'm they were all up and down the, you know, the uh, the the coast. They, I remember, I learned about that like on Ghost Hunters. They were there, and it. The Spanish were there. No, the Ghost Hunters were oh. on the boat. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Spanish. <laughs> like the Spanish were there on Ghost Hunters. No, that that was not true. The Span capital the Spanish. It, it's okay. 
Mitch, what do you got for us? Where does it hail from? It's not what we're talking about, but now I, now I need to know. I actually have no idea. Oh, oh wait, it was built in Canada. Oh, it was built in Canada. It's a okay. Canadian-born ship. Ooh. Whatever, if that means anything. We're both. I I don't know. It's just a question. I did not at all think French when I heard that name. It is just a question I needed an answer to. Now that we have it, though, fuck it, because we're not talking about it. it it's not. It important. was simply an example. We've wasted your time. It truly was. But if you if you are looking for a story about a haunted boat, then very easily you can just look up the Mary Celeste. In this particular instance, we're talking about the former, and that being... Well, in in this first one, it has a little bit of some spookiness to it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to swap this one for the other one, because this one's actually a little bit scarier, so I want this to be the, like, big boat show. I hate it when plans change. Uh Uh-huh. No, this one definitely did change, and I kind of apologize for you. I didn't even know what your plan was to begin with. But it's okay, because I just wanted... This is a quick one. It's the Octavius. Okay. Very, very interesting. Uh, This is old, and the legend started in 1775. Okay. Uh, A whaling ship named the Herald found this boat kind of just coasting off of Greenland. Nice. And... It it was a little weird, so they went up and boarded, and when they opened the hatch to get into the living quarters, they found all 28 crew members dead, frozen to death. Oh, my God. And then they went into the captain's room. I don't know what it's called, per se, the helm. I, I, don't, I don't think that's right. <laughs> At the helm. Um, I, I think that's, isn't the helm behind the, the steering wheel? I think you're right. Either way, they went to the I captain's room. And there was a woman with a small child on the bed, frozen to death. And in the desk was the captain with the pen still frozen in his hand. Okay. Wow. So this is a little strange, only because why is it in Greenland? What we've learned is that... Actually, you're not going to believe this. It's kind of scary. In 1761 this boat took off from China and it was going to go through the Northern Passage. But as we know, historically, the Northern Passage was not technically mapped out and completed yet at this point. So it was a rather new journey and they definitely went off and they got stuck near Greenland. Um, Just barreling into the unknown. It is believed that Well, actually, I guess I should say this. The reason that we know the dates is because, as I said, the ship's captain was frozen writing in his log book. Yeah. And he was currently writing a log dated in 1762. So that leads everyone to believe, who found this boat in 1775, that for the past 13 years, this boat was meandering the sea with no one running it. Everyone was frozen to death already at this point. Oh. Dude, do you think he, like, finished the word that he was writing, like, mid-stroke before he... I I believe... Before he froze? I believe be... he did, because Good. they... The crew that found this boat, they ran, fair, like, fairly enough, I guess, they ran, they ran from it, but they did try to snatch the logbook, but it was frozen, so when they snatched it... They only got the first couple pages and the last couple pages. Most of the pages ripped out. God damn it. But that is how we were able to figure out where they came from and went from because those were still intact. So we had the proper dates. Right. Yeah. And we just kind of assume they were going through what is now the Northern Passage. We don't know. That's just what they surmised based on the notes that they found. Okay. All right. But yeah, so that would be 31 people in total were all frozen to death aboard the Octavius floating in the ocean for upwards of 12 or more years at that point. <laughs> um, Holy fuck. The ocean is so big. And yeah, I... And terrifying. I want to take a moment to reflect on that because... Holy shit, that is scary. They're just dead. Dude. That is a long time to be lost at sea. It really is. <laughs> they weren't lost at sea for... 
Well, they were long. Yeah, they they, they died dead. far before that. You could they, still you know. be dead and lost, and I have a case of that later. Oh, that Don't is even just worry. Some spiritual just dread there. But yeah, so the Octavius did not have a particularly great run as a ship. Doesn't sound like it. I mean, it it never sprung a leak. It sounds like. No, no, it didn't. You know, so it, it's successful in that aspect of being a ship. It was a heavy manufactured you know? ship, I will say that. That is some fucking, you know, you imagine the barnacles didn't even get through. Yeah, I could agree. I would say um, I don't quite know how you, fr- to me on a boat, once it starts getting so cold that you're really starting to freeze, wouldn't you try going the other way? Is that ever a thought? I mean, by that point, even if you'd successfully turn around, like flip a Yui and start going backwards, it's like, well, you're already kind of in the thick of it. Like, it, it, like temperatures don't change suddenly. You know, yeah, I, I, guess I guarantee you have to there fight was it out. A, a great amount of time that they were in that before they realized, like, oh shit, yeah, it's only gonna get worse. Um, the, maybe the winds are unfavorable. The ocean is home to some badass stories. There's something about maritime horror that is different than anything else because it's because the sea is the worst thing on planet Earth, and it makes up most of it. I just am so scared of the ocean. Uh, upon researching this, I did learn apparently one of the legends of Blackbeard is that as his si- as his ship was sinking. He was decapitated and swimming in the water around his boat like as a chicken. it was sinking. Um, just a little interesting tidbit. It's just cool. <laughs> <What do you laughs> mean? That's all we're going to get from that? I, there's, it's just one part That's of his fucking legend. That's crazy. I love it. Um, it's just interesting because there's so much history to the ocean that we'll never know. No, yeah, dude. Maritime stuff. Uh, here's a perfect example of this. I apologize. I probably... We'll butcher this name because I I just don't know pronunciation well. Um, the SS Orang Medan. Orang Medan. That sounds fine. Uh, it's a it was a Dutch vessel and it was uh, going through the Strait of Malacca when <laughs> shit. All these things sounds like pies. Shit went wonky. Now this is this is a weird case. I will admit this right now. It's a weird case. Because dates tend to vary. There's a lot of sources that say it took place in 1941, 42, 45. It's weird. Human it's, beings aren't as exact about dates as we used to be, I feel like. it. Yeah, a little bit. It's strange. Um, but with all that being said, the story remains the same. Uh, so they're on their way. And areas that were, or not areas, ships in the area around uh, the Orang Medan, uh, they got a distress signal, and multiple different boats did say that they received the same distress signal. And all they heard was that all officers, including the captain, dead, lying in chart room and on bridge, probably whole crew dead. That's what it started with, and then after that, it was followed by a series of unintelligible Morse code, and then the final words heard were "I die," <laughs> and I die. So the people were going to the ship to figure out what the hell happened, and they get on, and um, everything was you know they looked normal from the outside. When they got on, everyone's dead. A bunch of people are dead. Even the dogs on the boat are dead. But what's weird about this? They are not frozen to death. None of them have open wounds, for that matter. Uh, it was described as if they were frightened to death. They were all laying on their backs, scared, in a horrified face Ooh. with a very creepy look on their face. Dude, is that like, like the Joker's gas that he uses? Interesting point. Ooh. Because, obviously, skeptics, you know, we have nothing to go on, so they're looking into what what so is this. Like, all right, we don't know how to explain this. Maybe Batman's real. We don't know what's going on. So... After the ship was boarded, uh, a fire had broke out in the bowels of the ship, and that's when they decided to ditch because it was their the ship was on fire. The bowels, huh? Uh, and after they got off the boat, the ship actually exploded, and it exploded with such force that it shot out of the water 
and then it sunk immediately without leaving a trace. <laughs> Weird shit. enough. Weird enough. We don't know what caused that, but this is where we get into the <laughs> Joker gas. They potentially believe that they were transferring nitroglycerin in the ship. Oh, that'll do it. Which would cause the yeah. explosion. Even weirder yet, uh, there is no mention of the SS Orang Madan's registration in Lloyd's shipping registrars, which is where you register your boats fucking at. So <laughs> there's no registration for this fucking boat. Okay, yeah. it doesn't exist. Uh, when they get there, people are dead. Uh, and then the boat explodes and does a somersault out of the water and just sinks. It performs the perfect dive. It wins the Olympic silver medal. Wow. It does so well. Uh, and this has pretty much led everyone to question what happened here. Was it... It's like, what the what the hell was that? Then we have a bunch of possibilities here, obviously. And they mention anything from poison to possible chemical reactions to things that may or may not have been being transported. Uh, Perhaps. But, Maybe they had some open fucking flames over some natural gas deposits coming up through the ocean from down below. Maybe. Uh, carbon monoxide, perhaps. Possibly. Uh, nitroglycerin. That that one's a little out there for me, I think. Why? Only because it doesn't seem like something that would... I don't know, I guess. Maybe it isn't. I don't Like, what time period did you say it was happening towards? What, the the ship? Yeah, like, what's what around, like, what year? Man, this was... I gotta... It can't be that long ago. It was somewhere in the 40s. They don't know exactly. In the 40s? Somewhere in... 1940s? Yeah, 1940. Oh, all right. In the 1940s. I was thinking that the construction of the, the fucking uh, railroads there, but never mind. I don't know. They're still using it for stuff, though, right? Probably. I mean, you got to get it around to use it everywhere. But it is, it's just an interesting little tale. And now this this leads to other examples. There are examples of individuals seeing uh, the remnants of ships like these. Uh, like, like what you were saying that they aren't usually, like maybe just like apparitions of the ships? Yeah, more images. Similar, if you've ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean, something like that, but slightly less like physical. A, like a green glow to it. Yeah. Um, a lot of those are folklore, things of that nature. Um, Hawaii, actually, they, when I was, I was there a while ago, and I was, they have a lot of stories about ghost ships. I always forget you've been to Hawaii, you fucking lucky guy. It's a nice place. Dude, Mitch was there, too. You're the odd have man you, out Has here. everyone on the show been to Hawaii but me? Uh... Well, at least right now, yeah. Fuck you Out of guys. the three of us, yeah. Um, to Colorado once. It's hey, that's a nice place. That's nice. That's nice. But they, right? I remember hearing like a lot of sh like stories of that nature, where people are out fishing in smaller boats, deep sea fishing, and they see large vessels or even sometimes older looking ships that wander into the picture, and they're not real. Similar to that of a ghost train. I think that was Hey Arnold. <laughs> a ghost train? Wasn't that in Hey Arnold when I they had the ghost train? I seem to remember something like that, but I, I could not tell you any details. But, yeah, something about this creeps me out. Only because, put yourself in that situation. You're on a boat somewhere in the middle of the ocean. I don't want to put this in the universe, but if something terrible were to happen... And everyone was dead but you. What the hell do you do? You know, what do you do? Try to go. You try to go in one direction, keep that one direction. But meanwhile, you just have terrible panic attacks. Mm hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. I don't Run know. Run out of water. How else to say that? Drink now, the blood of the dead people around you just to stay hydrated, but you're puking too. So it's like, this. Con you have to keep doing it. It's, it's going to be gross. I have no idea what you're talking about. And then about. you still have to navigate at the same time as you're drinking all the blood. 
But why are you Ugh. drinking the blood? Just stay hydrated. You ran out of water on this yacht full of people I'm, that are dead now in the middle of the ocean. And I'm that's 100% why you get certain that blood will not hydrate you. Well, you're trying. You're trying anything. There's no liquids. If anything, urine You would already drank all you. the booze before it all happened. Whatever that would not down. hydrate you either. Yeah, I know. It would dehydrate you, so it's all in the blood, so that's kind of dehydrating you. But if there's any chance... Of the blood hydrating you, it's going to happen. You're fucking mad. You have to okay, keep drinking no, the you blood are, of your dead shipmates. You're an absolute <laughs> madman. But the blood will keep you younger. What is this? The satanic No, that's the adrenochrome. We, that's a, we have to do some... I'm too busy navigating to find the adrenochrome. I, okay, that's fair. But I still have to drink the blood. That's fair. Um. So the ocean is terrifying, like I keep saying. It's not a good place to be. It is. It's... It's just unknown. It's the unknown. They say the fear of the unknown. It's the fucking ocean. It, we don't know. Yeah. It's like outer space, but it's way more reachable. The than ocean outer is space. as ambiguous as death, and that's just the way bad. I look at it. Any person on this planet right now can get themselves to the bottom of the ocean. They will not survive, but they can get there. Space. I couldn't even tell you how to get a mile into the air yeah. without being in a building. Um, or an airplane or a helicopter. No other, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe a hot air balloon. Where do you find those nowadays? I don't know. That's like a specialty fucking pr- profession. I've, yeah, in movies, it's always like car dealerships have them. It's like, no, like, that's just a balloon no. sent to me. Ma- made to look like it, you know what's that? I want to uh, shift gears here. We're the ocean's going, terrible. Yeah, the ocean, it's a whole different kind of scary the reason I bring All that, that up, water and nothing to drink. I feel that the ocean gets neglected. Times like this, day before Halloween, I'm guilty of it myself. You know, you want to see zombies, slashers, ghosts. We're uh, going to watch some zombies in a bit. Yeah, things of that nature. Don't However, we often overlook the simple fears that are around us every day. The ocean. That's, I would, I would say, a very common one. Uh, I'm happy to be landlocked right now. You have sp- people are afraid of spiders, but there is there's something about the ocean that the fear of it is way different than any other fear. Like at least spiders are in your element. It's like the air, but it's like water. It's like all right, I am the fish out of water here, and yeah, and I, this Literally. I just don't know how to do anything properly, let alone defend myself. You damn skippy kid! All right, so I'm switching gears here. We're going, I, I just brought one unsolved crime to the table, and the, I was going to do more, but then I kind of was thinking about uh, the next few weeks of the show, Yeah, and they're very, we're, we're doing a couple of true crimes coming up here. It's true, it's going to be cool. So uh, I want to, I want to kind of, I wanted to find one that I'd never heard of personally, and one that is kind of quick and easy. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing uh, the man named Charles Rogers, okay? And you might think an unsolved murder, but we have a, a victim, or a, a, not a victim, I'm sorry, a, what's, what's the opposite of the victim? The perpetrator? Yes, the, thank you. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Are you telling me that the perpetrator is a man by the name of Mr. Rogers? Yeah, in this sense. Uh, I God. I can't believe I can remember that fucking word, that pisses me off. Um, but I, I love the, <laughs> the alien criminal, there. just like maybe, um, I don't know, the guy. So, just a little background on you here. Uh, in 1942, Charles Rogers, he enrolled at Texas A&M University, fucking dropped out the same year. You think he's a failure? Boom, no. He went to the University of Houston, and he got a bachelor degree in nuclear physics. He'll show you. Uh-huh. There you go. During World War II, uh, he was a pilot in the U.S. Navy. Shout out to David. What up, what up? David, he's over there. And he served in the Office of Naval Intelligence. After the war, he worked as a seismologist for Shell Oil for nine years. What the hell is a seismologist? Seismologist, like, you know, the people that study earthquakes and stuff. Oh, like seismic. Yeah. Activity. Okay. Seismologist. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know the nitty gritty, but I would imagine for an oil company, you're probably. You're probably a little important, right? Yeah, you're probably doing a lot of the drilling, and you're probably in charge of 
most of the math behind yeah, all that. a lot of the, uh, the in and outs of it don't happen without you saying, yeah, you could do that. I could be very wrong, but I don't know. It sounds important. He's probably rich. Uh, in 1957, he quit that job for <laughs> for no true reason. Um, it was weird. Uh, friends and associates of Rogers, uh, they talked about him, and they said that he was really good at his job. Like, he was really good. Um, I guess he specialized in what they called finding the oil. But it really was just measurements of seismic activity in the ground to therefore mathematically eliminate where deposits of oil would and wouldn't be. Sounds like a fucking nerd. Yeah, and this guy was really good at it. Um, he, he was, was really good at something. He was a genius. Idiot. He spoke seven languages fluently. <laughs> so stupid. And <laughs> he had an extreme interest in ham radios, building them, communicating with them. Uh, he was really big into that. All right, that's cool. Uh, in the mid-50s, he joined the Civil Air Patrol, and that's where he met this dude named David Ferry. And that name might ring a little bell for you. Do you know why? Did he uh, Did he break the sound barrier or whatever? No, David Ferry was an alleged conspirator in the JFK assassination. Oh. Don't worry. We're not done with that yet. No one will ever be done with that. In 1960, no, I mean in this story. Ooh. In 1965, uh, this guy's unemployed. He's living back at home with his parents, uh, Fred and yeah. Edwina. And uh, so he's living in Mon the Montrose neighborhood of Houston. If any of you are in Houston, Texas, uh, Montrose, if that's still a place, that's where he was. Tell us some things about that place. Um, us at startacultus at gmail.com. He was described as extremely reclusive, and uh, the only way that he would communicate with his parents were by, or excuse me, was by slipping notes under doors. That's healthy to communicate to them. It's fine. Uh, and funny enough, until after the events of one fateful evening, none of the neighbors knew that Charles lived in the house because. Charles genuine or generally left the home before the sun came up and did not come back until the sun was already down. This guy's sounding like me, and it's very depressing. Yeah, they didn't know he lived there. Yeah. Uh, so on June 23rd of 1965, two Houston police officers broke down the door to the Rogers home after Edwina's nephew named Marvin reported that he had been trying to contact his aunt for days and the phone was unanswered. Upon entering the home, nothing was unusual. The only thing they did see was that there was food still sitting out on the dining room table. Things of that nature. Uh, dishes weren't washed, things of that. Um, so they were kind of just scoping out. They opened one of the refrigerators uh, and they saw cuts of washed and unwrapped meat laying in the fridge and they were stacked on top of each other's on the shelves in the fridge um they thought that it was a butchered pig or severed several butchered pigs yeah um and but sadly or not in the vegetable crisper as he was closing the fridge uh one of the police officers saw two human heads Oh, there you go. Belonging to those of the mother and the father, Fred and Edwina Rogers. All right, well, I would never do this. I, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so <laughs> they realized that, that hog meat was actually their limbs and their torso, and that their organs had been removed, chopped up, washed and rinsed, and flushed down the toilet, and they were later found in a sewer drain. That's how they knew that this happened. All right. Um, yeah, so police figured out that they had been killed on Father's Day that year, June 20th. So five days previous to them coming into the home. They're discovering it all. Uh, an autopsy on Fred showed that he was killed by several extremely heavy blows to the back of the head with a claw hammer. And his eyes had been gouged out and his genitalia removed before death. Um, yeah. Then Edwina had been beaten severely and then shot execution style in the face. Okay. Um, 
Then when they searched more of the house, they figured out that the bodies were chopped up in the upstairs bathroom because they found traces of blood all over the bathtub. Yeah. So all of this comes together with what? Where the fuck is Charles Rogers? Where'd he go? Where is he? Well, Charles Rogers has never been found again. <laughs> uh, since that day, no one has ever seen Charles Rogers. He could be anybody you know. <laughs> um, but now this gets interesting because in 1992, uh, in the book The Man on the Grassy Knoll by John R. Craig and Philip A. Rogers, no relation, I don't believe. Okay. Um, according to the studies that they found, they found that Charles Rogers was actually working for the CIA during the early 60s. And that he was the one who likely impersonated Lee Harvey Oswald in Mexico City, along with Charles Harrelson, who you might know as Woody Harrelson's father. Uh, oh he was also there. Uh, they were two of the three, the third being Chauncey Holt, of the, quote, three tramps that were arrested in Dealey Plaza after the assassination, and supposedly they think that they caught him, but no one ever knew. No one truly knows the identities. Uh, all of this goes on. If you get into the JFK conspiracy, which honestly we'll do at some point because it's we ha I mean, outstanding. At this point, we kind of got to. We kind of got to. It is pretty, pretty much painted that uh, the CIA was responsible for a lot of things. That's insane. Wait, so, like, the CIA would be responsible for his parents' death? Like, he didn't do that? No, no, like, no, no, no. I'm talking maybe. about JFK. Yeah. Uh, JFK's what parents about the other guy? were was, not assassinated. It was a, a group of the three. No, no, no. This has nothing to do with what I'm mentioning right God now. God damn it, Ryan. I'm saying JFK's death, there's a lot of shady business with the CIA yeah. around his death. And supposedly, this Charles Rogers might have had CIA affiliations. There and, you go. Uh, they never found him. They have no idea if they actually found him. In the book uh, from 1992, they suggest that perhaps Charles Rogers had fled to Guatemala. And um, other people don't believe that so much. So no one really knows. Uh, in 1975... They officially announced Charles Rogers dead because he had been missing for 10 years and they needed to declare him dead to close his estate as his parents were dead. Jesus. Um, so they're still currently investigating it. Uh, individual people have claimed to have found uh, Charles Rogers, but no one knows. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine it's a lot of like independent uh, investigators just because... Oh, absolutely. They declared him dead so they could close it, you know? Like, the the, the officials are not looking for this guy. But Definitely. That is pretty crazy. But so, like, the guy whose parents ended up dead has, like, CSI or it's CIA claimed, affiliations. It's claimed CIA. that he had CIA affiliations. Okay. That might explain his, like, his ambiguity to all the neighbors and stuff. It's like he would leave before the morning. He would come back after night. Well, I mean, it would know? explain quite a bit. And maybe... Not the parents. Well, I guess if you want to get real about it, it could explain the parents' deaths. Um, Maybe like some of his fellow operatives were just a particularly uh, sadistic. Oh, so yeah, well, I was... that they had to do. Their boss was like, "This guy's parents got to die." They're just like, "We're going to be crazy tonight. We're no, going to go see, all, was, all out." I was thinking more real, at least to me, more realistically, it would be this is a couple years after, so this is two years. JFK still. Probably dominating the news at this point. Yeah. Um, it, at some level, uh, no one's forgotten. Still, and people haven't forgotten. Yeah. Perhaps, uh, if this is true, I'm just saying if, this is a big if, if this is true that he has connections to the CIA, perhaps maybe they were worried that he would spill the beans if it was true. And as a measure of making sure he didn't, uh, his parents were killed. Obviously, making it look like him, he had kind of a shoddy past. Yeah. And, you know, you can claim, oh, he's a weirdo nut job that killed his parents and chopped him up. Yeah. It's it's the perfect weather for conspiracy. Maybe it was like a situation like you have to disappear. He's like, I don't want to. It's like we're going to make you have to. Or, you know. And but, but what I find funny about this story, let's say you totally think that's bullshit, right? 
I'll buy it. I maybe it is bullshit. But then you know what the story is? The story is about a guy who worked for an oil company in the fucking sixties, quit his job, murdered his parents, and successfully disappeared into nothing. No one's ever found him again. Is that not just as crazy? Tell me how not crazy that is. And like They're what equally other is crazy, but one is definitely more realistic far fetched. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I feel like it was easier to get away with murder back then. A hundred percent. Like you could you could run away to anywhere and they wouldn't find you. No social media, you know, no NSA. It's very no true. Internet. It's very true, but you want to close a bank account? Just take all the money out of it. Just go to a different town. You also this was this in the sixties. It, it was a lot different than it is today. But it was, it wasn't as easy as you think. You know, I mean, look at a, a character like DB Cooper, who's another you know full episode in and of itself. Yeah, it it's impossible. It, it's very unlikely that a person could just disappear without something happening. Yeah. But well, maybe it happens more often than we know, and they're that good at it. You never know. know. You definitely, have to accept both sides of the coin. Definitely in this day and age, I feel like it's nearly impossible. Like, absolutely impossible unless you just isolate from all people forever. Somewhere. Maybe Alaska. You that know? could work. Like, it, I feel like there's no way, dude. There's, there's cameras everywhere, facial recognition. There's fucking... You can't ever jump a fucking subway like turnstile too risky no it is, is fucking crazy though it's a very just, unique like, world to disappear into the ether i feel like someone someone like that probably couldn't pull that off let's say then. somehow some way you're in texas and you want to see this area uh, the exact address is 1815 driscoll street um after the murders, it remained unsold. It was torn down in 1972. And then in the year 2000, it was turned into condos. All right, so then, all right, everybody go to that address uh, and and just uh, advertise this show. To everyone in there, if you can get in, maybe, like, tail someone as they're opening the door, you know, and as they close it, you, you catch it, then go in start knocking on people's doors. Yeah. Tell them about the show. Yeah, just let them know and tell them that we're here. You know, we we want it. We are starting a cult, so so, so tell them about it. The last little tidbit of information. I Anyone that knows this show, or if you don't know the show, I'll tell you right now, I personally love cryptids. They are outstanding. Oh, they're great. I'm Grant, by the way. We're almost 40 minutes in. I don't know if I introduced myself. I'm Jake. Myself. Mitch is here. He's been talking a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are starting a cult as a show. I'm pretty sure we mentioned that to some degree. We had to at some in point. In some sort of context. At one, at one point or I another. I think maybe it was in the golden emblem thing. However, I love the cryptids. Now, I will be Number honest two. with you. Cryptids are badass. Uh, as a young child, you learn, or at least I learned, about Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, things of that nature. Really cool. Older you get, you learn about the weirder ones. You know, maybe the melon heads. Interesting little spooky story. Flatwoods Monster. Um, Nothing compares to the folklore of fucking older countries. Uh, America oh, does shit. not have shit no. on these places. Oh, my God. We and, were just watching some shit on this. Yes. And I... It, this is... And again, this is an episode that could be a series because it's so expansive. So I'm really just going to kind of give you the cliff notes. And this is something I'd really like to revisit at a much stronger point at another point in time. You're totally fit. Bring up whatever you want to. Like I said, like I, I did a shit ton of research on one thing that I realized wasn't spooky for this week. So we're just going to do it later. Yeah, no, we it's have, a whole other episode that we got, dude. You can do whatever it you birthed want. us a whole new theme. Yeah, we have we're we're just that much more ahead now. It's true. Um, but so I just want to throw out uh the yokai. So the yokai, um, let's say you want to look these up. Y o k a i. That is how you spell them in English. Um, the yokai. It is Japanese folklore. Now these kind of encompass not only cryptids but also supernatural entities, uh, spirits, poltergeist, things of that nature. I guess they kind of get lumped in with cryptids in a way here in America. But 
uh, for the case of the yokai, they're one and the same. Yeah. They're ex- they're folklore. They're urban legends, but they're ancient. They're not... Here in America, we get, oh, the licked hand. Oh, it's a spooky story. Yes, it is. Or, oh, the man with the hooked hand. But you realize that there's a guy in a car in that story. Um, so that would suggest <laughs> that this story didn't happen that long ago, which arguably makes it creepier. However, there's something, again, like the ocean, there's something unwritten rule spookiness about ancient, ancient, ancient shit. Oh, yeah, because it's so old. It's so old, it's, it's almost so fucking hard to old. question. Yeah. It is. There comes a point where you can almost not even question the reality behind it because it's so old. It's almost a myth. And that is what the yokai are. Uh, they're typically explained... Uh, they're personifications of supernatural or unaccountable phenomena to their informants. So what they're that would informants, mean? Informants, huh? They're just a, they're fucking supernatural beings. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Um, they're broken into different sections. So you have humans, animals, plants, objects, and irregular phenomena. So we co- ghosts. Uh, Cryptids would be kind of human animals in that area. Plants, that's interesting, because we don't get that here. We Botanist horror. The Little Shop of Horrors is the closest we've ever gotten to that. Yeah, and that just has tons of music. And objects. And then it goes even further. Uh, Some of them go into structural appearances, so sometimes yokai folklore encompasses uh, ancient buildings like haunted buildings, perhaps. Interesting. Uh, they're kind of lumped into some of the yokai tales. It's it's huge. It's You're going to find a thousand different answers when you come looking at yokai. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on that so we could kind of talk about some of the interesting ones. Not to say that there's ones that aren't interesting, because no, they all, all are. they're all fucking insane. Um, but we got... I'm going to... I'll cover one... From each type, okay? So we will start with the Tanuki, okay? I like the Tanuki because it's kind of cute and it's fun. Anything that ends in Uki is so cute. Um, These are not evil by any nature. Uh, They're typically seen as what most people would call neutral behavior. They're the kind of jokesters, but they're never cruel. Um, So it's supposedly a real animal that has a reputation for magic and mischief. Uh, It is also known in America as the Japanese raccoon dog. (laughs) What? That sounds really offensive. (laughs) No, it literally is a cross between a small dog, uh, some say Pomeranian looking, with a raccoon. It's just a hybrid of those two animals. It sounds like a fox. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And they look kind of plump and chubby because they have thick fur. Hey, are these the raccoon dog things that have uh, giant testicles and they can shape shift? Um, no. I don't know how those two details. They are can shape shift. I'll be honest with you. I don't know about giant balls, but they do shape shift. Yeah, the so balls part is throwing me. I really, I don't know. I could, I could be making that up for all I know. But <laughs> the yeah. So the, we got we got Japanese raccoon dogs. Okay, All we right. got some cool fucking shit. Those are that. Those are that. Um. Now we have a couple different weird. There's so many different characteristics here. So there's some generic ones. Um. We have the Rokuro Kubi, and these are humanoids. Uh. They they're human beings that are able to elongate their necks during nighttime. Oh, uh, God. Upwards of 10 feet long. Dude, we were just looking at pictures of this. They look insane. How do you spell this? How do you spell this? So people can look it up. The Rokuro Kubi? I'm not spelling all of You're these. not spelling it? Post a picture. We'll do that. Yeah, we can. We'll and maybe I'll, up on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, we'll write it in there. You got um, to see these things. Yeah. Yeah, just do that. Then you have the Ohaguro Betari. Uh, this is a female figure. That when you look upon the female figure, the only thing they have on their face is a blackened mouth. Then you have the Futukuchi Ona. 
Okay. Okay. And that is a woman with a large mouth on the back of her head. It's on the back now. Well, it's on the front and the back. It's a two-sided oh. mouth attack. You could do so many blowjobs. You would two-sided cut mouth that down attack. immediately. <laughs> um, then you have the Doro Tabu. The Doro Tabu. That is the risen corpse of a farmer who haunts his abused land, or her land if you're a female oh. farmer. So what is he, just correct your method of planting? No, he just haunts like you if night? you fuck up his garden, bro. What the fuck? Um, now, they, now we have the Azukurai. And these are kind of weird. These are very specific yokai. The Azukurai is a yokai that can only be found washing azuki beans. Wow. Then you have uh, the Akaname. <laughs> We're just moving past. What do they do? Is no, they just they wash do? beans. They just wash beans? That's mm-hmm. how they're... <laughs> they're bean washers. All the other ones were so, like, horrifying. No, these are not as horrifying. These are... We'll get to the horrifying ones in a minute. <laughs> like, the beans aren't even, like, poisonous or anything? <laughs> no, no, no. I just want you to know <laughs> how... washing them. I really just wanted to paint a picture of how expansive All right. the yokai is. It's umbrella a whole is. world. It's like a Sims. Yeah, it is. So we have the Akanami. Uh, these are only found in dirty bathrooms, and they spend its time <laughs> licking the filth on the floor. Yum. That's Great. their job. Then you have the Tofu Kozo, and that is they a small meat. monk that is always seen carrying a plate of tofu. There we go. Awesome. That's <laughs> that's just a person. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a person doing something. It's so... Not- we're working with all of these different types. I personally like the guy that it licks the bathroom expensive. floor. That one, um, that, that's like a dare. I know? feel like that guy got the shit end of the stick. Literally. Truly. Yeah, it's very, yeah. He has to lick fecal matter remnants off the floor. Got to keep it clean. And, now don't get me wrong, we, go, we get into... Other types of yokai. Now, I mean, they're scary. There's some that are nice. They just became like like garbage pail kids at the end there. Or what? What were they? What were those called? What garbage pail kids? The garbage pail kids. That is what yeah. it's called. They, oh it's yeah. It's just like those. No, a hundred percent. Bathroom floors and shit. So we have, I would say, one of the biggest ones is the yoki ona. Yeah. The yoki ona. And that is, interestingly enough, that is a woman. It's the ghost of a woman. It's a girl. A very pale, white woman with dark hair. And she uh, just sucks the life out of you uh, with her cold, frozen breath. And interestingly enough, she might not hate all of her victims. She might fall in love with you. Let's say you're lucky enough to fall in love with the Yoki, the Yuki Ona, or the Yoko Ona, perhaps. Oh. Once she. Oh. <laughs> John Lennon is a weak man. Yep. Once she falls in love Was. with you, you get married. You have a great life. But then you kind of start to question hey, maybe I'm married to an immortal she witch. <laughs> hey, maybe I shouldn't have quit the Beatles just now. And once you come to the realization that she is undead. She gets so angry that she will murder every single one of your neighbors. She will just go what? to your village Not even you? and just murder everyone. She just takes them out like you have no idea. She wow. just annihilates these motherfuckers. I'm talking just murder. And then he found out, and that's why he had to go. Yeah. Then, on a separate note, we got I got five left for you, okay? Go, yeah. Now, I'm going to get fine. into the couple of the more well-known ones. The Kappa. Yeah. Very Kappa. adorable. I'm going to post a picture of the Kappa because it's my absolute favorite thing in the universe. Um, and the Kappa is a green amphibious human turtle with webbed hands and feet. That sounds adorable. And what they do is they sit along the water's edge and they lure you into the water so that they can drown you. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have a plate-shaped cavity on their head okay. that retains water so that they can hide. And the only what? way to get away from the kappa, 
you have to make them spill the water because that is what gives them their power. So the water that's oh. sloshing around in their head, if they spill it, they can't kill you. That's even more adorable. Like <laughs> like dealing with them is like a fun game. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, and this is kind of why it has led a lot of people that know about the kappa and the folklore. They, It's often depicted as more of a cute animal, kind of like adorable sweetheart. You'll yeah, like an adorable killer like hippopotamuses. Uh-huh. And funny enough, this is where the design for Squirtle came from. No shit. Yes, <laughs> it came awesome. from the Japanese folklore. Dude, fuck funny yeah. enough, if you look into it, a lot of Pokemon are based off of yokai. Not necessarily their characteristics, but more their physical features. Damn. I did not know that. I'm mm-hmm. sure there are some Pokemon buffs out there screaming at us, but. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Ooh, this one's scary. It's like, of course it's the yokai. This is, this one, this one's creepy. The Honeona, the Honeona. Just like her name, the Honeoma is a woman, but she's not a woman. She's in the form of bones, which uh. this makes her, in their folklore, it's called a Yuri, someone that's made out of skeleton. Which means bone woman. Um, She is a woman who retains her undying love even after death. Um, pretty much the legend goes that the Honey Ona got so lonely that she rose from the grave to go back to her former lover's house to spend the night. Uh, and whenever the sun would come up, she would have to return to the grave. Um, every night that she would go there, she would suck some life force from her lover, weakening him day by day. Um, eventually this guy became so obsessed, uh, with seeing his former lover that he dug her up from the ground, jumped into her coffin, and embraced her until he died. Oh, that's kind of nice. Is that, uh, what's it, what's it like? It's like that Poe story. Who knows what it is? The, oh yeah, the Edgar Allan Poe? Yeah, it's like, uh, Ed, Ed, Annabelle Lee or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this it's one, like this is a big one. This is big in, like, the YouTube world. Uh, it's is kind it? of a spooky one. The Kushisaki Ona. Oh, yeah. The Kushisaki Ona. Uh, it, Sake. It literally translates to slit-mouthed woman. Um, so it's a Japanese urban legend. Uh, it's a malicious spirit of a woman who often covers her mouth with a mask. Funny enough, that means a lot more nowadays <laughs> than it did at the birth you of should. this urban legend. You should wear it. But she has her face covered at all times. And she goes up to random people, and she asks them, do you think I am beautiful? And if you say no, she'll kill you. Kind of a baiting question. She'll kill you. She will kill you if you say no. That's very vain of her. Now, if you say yes, she's going to open her mask and show you her face. And she's going to ask you the same question again. And if you say no, she'll kill you, but make it even worse than she would have done the first time. Oh, wow. And if you say no, some say she will smile, some say she will hug you, but then what she will do is she will cut your mouth off to resemble her mouth. So there's no getting out of this. It's a catch-22. You either die or you live long enough to get your face slit. Yes. Well, this is... It's another Joker scenario. The Joker keeps coming up. This is where you get into the yokai territory. I kind of... I, I, we need to revisit this at some point. No, we definitely do. We'll do an in-depth thing. It's just very hard, that. though. It's so enormous. There's so many different types, and the stories kind of fall into three separate categories being, well, I guess, probably more than three, but it's neutral or good would be in the same category, evil and then mischievous. And in this case, evil would be an umbrella term for Yokai that you can't win with. Uh, she is one of right. them. There's plenty of other ones that really there's no way to escape it. Once the yokai chooses you to be either the victim to or like to, the basically. person of interest, there's that's it. Like there's no way of stopping it. There's there's plenty of stories where that is the case. So it it falls into certain categories, and this is arguably the most popular among the world. Probably, uh, it's got the most cultural appeal. It's creepy enough. The imagery is terrifying. It is. It's, it really is. It's spooky, scary, skeleton time. You know. 
Um, so then we have the Akamanto. Akamanto. The Akamanto. The Akamanto. Yeah, you're fair. Um, this one's weird. They are masked spirits that wear red cloaks, and they appear in public or school bathrooms. And they're masked. Yeah. Um, the Akamanto will ask the occupant of the toilet if they want to use red toilet paper or blue toilet paper. <laughs> if the occupant chooses red, they will be killed so that their dead body will be drenched in their own blood. And if they choose blue, Akamanto will strangle the occupant until their face turns blue. Oh. So, pretty much, you're fucked. You, However, just, you get to choose, though. No, 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 no. Akamanto. Oh. Akamanto. Sorry. Manto. Akamanto. Akamanto has a loophole. If you don't answer the question, if you remain silent, it will leave you alone. But then do you get to not, do you get to, do you, like, are you able to wipe? Well, what's more just, important? I guess it really depends. At that point, what's more important, man? I don't know <laughs> what you want from me. All right, so I'm going to tell you this. We're going to move on to the last one. We're going to cover another one. I'm going to post a picture of the kappa and this one. Uh, we're going to revisit the Raku Rakubi. Rakubi. These are the long neck people. Yeah. So let me just give you a little bit of background. A little synopsis. Um, these are another supernatural creature. So there are two types of Roku Rokubi. Uh, there is the one where the head comes off entirely and it can fly around uh, on its own accord. And those are called Nukukubi. Wait, the head can fly around? Yeah, without oh, uh, detached from the body. That's so sick. And then there's the other one where the necks can stretch extremely far. These are just referred to as Rokuro Kubi. Um, so what happens in these scenarios? Um, when the head elongates, they often attack animals and people. Uh, they use their long tongues to lick lamp oil out of lamps. You gotta, you gotta get that lamp oil. Uh, they scare people that are around them, and if you are unlucky enough, they might just drink your blood. <laughs> they don't need to. That's just a, maybe they maybe might drink they your might blood. Do it. They might not. That's, I don't know. Oh, Jesus, dude. So effectively, yeah. that is a very, 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 very brief overview of the yokai. Yeah, and that dude, the ones that we were just talking about. What was the name of the ones that we were just talking about? The last one? Yeah. The Rakura Kubi? The Rakura Kubi, dude. Their necks are like serpents in a lot of the Oh, yeah. Pictures. No, you'll see, it's the, crazy. you'll see the painting. It's, it's, a, right. it's a wicked painting. You know what I thought of uh, when you're uh, describing the, what are they called? The Rakura Kubi? Yeah. Reminds me of that scene in Beetlejuice when yeah. Beetlejuice turns into a snake. Yeah, I can see that. I definitely can see that. No, yeah, that's a perfect description of a lot of the things we saw. But, yeah, effectively... That is our episode. I want you it to is. know this. And Have a great Halloween. I know. It's going to be me. Halloween tomorrow. It is. When a lot of people are probably going to be listening to this, it's what, what time is it? It's late. It's almost 9 o'clock. Yeah. We only got like three hours left in the day. It, Happy Halloween, Halloween is a great holiday. Get out and enjoy it. Or it's don't get one. out. Stay in and enjoy it. You enjoy should probably it stay however in. you want it. Yeah. I mean, just eat some candy. That's for sure. Maybe watch something that makes you scared. Do something you feel is... Spooky and fun. If you want to uh, get real spooky, listen back to the Toy Box Killer episode of ours. I would say I would um, say the demonic possession or the Einfield. Also, that guys. one. All of those Toy uh, Box. Just maybe binge those. But it's not really as scary as more of just absolutely horrific. Oh yeah, it's it's terrifying because it happened. It's like oh goodness, that's that's what it is. <laughs> oh gracious, but, that's what you think when you hear that. Yeah, check it out. Um. Have a good one. Have a yeah. safe holiday. Enjoy It'll be your time. Halloween just now. And get ready for some new We Are Starting a Cult episodes yeah. next Friday. It's going to be crime. Yes. Oriented. Jean Benet so, Ramsey. I can say go. it. I don't yeah, care. I think we've said it already, haven't we? No, it was on the Patreon, I believe, <gasps> it, wasn't it? Ah, they're blending. We, By the way, we do have Patreon. There are ep extra episodes of some original stories paired with some movie reviews by Grant and I. Yes, uh, uh, that that makes three now. There are three yeah, episodes. There are three up there. I'm uh, very proud of my last story. 
No, I, that one was crazy. Thank I liked you, it a lot. It was really fun. So go check that out. There's a link below to our Patreon. Just uh, uh, become a, become a patron, and you'll be have access to those. Hell yeah, you will. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to us there. Yeah. Uh, and then on, on Patreon, on all, all stuff. of the shit, all yeah, everything, it, all the shit, all Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And, so uh, yeah. have a good one. Yeah, goodbye. Mitch was here as well. What is he gonna say just now, though? Oh, I love being purple. <laughs>